Welcome back. In this second chapter on the funnel exercise, I'm going to create an offset surface for the funnel handle. Let's begin with a sketch on the XY plane. We'll activate the rectangle tool and create a couple rectangles right here. Right click, done. Now let's apply an equal constraint. And a horizontal constraint between this point and this point. And a horizontal constraint between this point and the origin point. Let's apply some dimensions now. The sides of this square will be half an inch. OK. This dimension also half an inch. OK. Last dimension. Two inches. OK. Let's exit our sketch. Take an isometric view. We're going to be using this sketch to create segments of the handle that'll be attached to the surface of the funnel body. I'm going to look at a few different ways that we can create those surfaces. Let's begin by activating the extrude command. Output type surfaces. And let's select this profile. Extends to next for the terminator. Let's select this surface. OK. Now we can use the boundary patch tool to create this surface. And let's select my edges. This edge. This edge. This edge. This edge. Apply. And done. Here is our surface. Let's right click on Sketch 5 and select Share Sketch. Let's create a second extrusion now. This time we'll output as a solid. Select this profile, Extends to Next. For our terminator, we'll use this surface. Click OK. Now I'm going to offset this face. Output Surface. The value of our offset, 0. And let's select the face to thicken. We'll choose this face. And click OK. Here is our next surface. Let's right click and hide Solid 1. We're also going to hide Offset Surface 1. Right click, Visibility. Now let's activate the Extrude command again. Output is Surfaces. Select the profile to extrude. You need to be sure that this surface extends behind the edge of the funnel body surface. Let's click OK. And now let's do a zero offset on this surface. Thicken offset. We're going to select this surface, enter zero distance, and click OK. Now let's right click and hide loft 1. And let's activate the trim tool. Segments to remove, click here. OK. As you see, we've created a similar surface, just in a different way. Let me hide these surfaces now. Right click, visibility. And let's go to the Surfaces folder. Right click, Visibility. Let's bring in Loft 1. Right click, Select Visibility. Activate the Extrude command. Output is Surfaces. Profile, let's select here. Extents to Next. The Terminator. This profile. And click OK. Now let's create a surface using the Boundary Patch tool. We need these four edges. Two, three, 
for apply and done. Let's hide extrusion 3, right click visibility, and let's hide loft 1 as well. Right click visibility. As you see, when I hide these surfaces, what I've got left in my browser looks pretty much the same. But they are different, however. However, they are indeed different. Let's just make some modifications that will emphasize this fact. Let's offset the surface by maybe half an inch. Click OK. Now let's right click and hide boundary patch 3. Right click visibility. And let's bring in offset 1. Right click visibility. Now let's offset the surfaces. Let's offset this surface by half an inch. OK. And let's right click and hide offset 1. Lastly, let's bring in surface 8. Right click visibility. This is actually trim 1. If you're not sure which surface it is, you could just expand the branch to see how it was built. OK, let's activate the offset tool. Output type surfaces. The face. OK. Let's zoom in on our surface. The farther from the original surface that you offset, the bigger the distortion. And of course, the more complex your surface is, the more pronounced this phenomenon will be. In other words, if you happen to be offsetting a completely flat surface, the surface won't change regardless how much the offset distance is. All of this might seem to be a tangent to my task of creating the funnel handle, but it's important to understand that the different methods you use to create a feature each have implications down the line. Surfaces 6, 8, and 10. These are the original surfaces that we created. You can see that they're virtually identical. Now the surfaces that we created as a result of the offset command, those are surfaces 12 and 13, they're also virtually identical. Surface 11 is obviously different. Even though we use different tools to create the original surfaces, both of the surfaces are derivatives of an original surface. In other words, they mimic the original surface. In our last example, when we recreated surface 11, we used the boundary patch tool to recreate the original surface. As a result, the offset surface does look a little bit different. Let's collapse the surface 10 branch. Let's mouse over surface 11's offset. It does look significantly different. All right, let's hide some of these surfaces. One more point here. The surfaces aren't only different from each other, they're also different from the original surface. Let's right click and hide surfaces 11 and 12. Surface 13, that's the one we just created using surface 8 or offset 5 right here. Let's leave that one visible. Now let's go to the Tools tab. Select the Distance tool. Let's measure the distance between the bottom left and top right hand corner. The distance is 0.744 inches. Let's complete the same measurement here. The distance is a little larger, 0.825 inches. In our case, we're not going to offset these surfaces half an inch from each other. The tightness of the precision for this particular feature, the funnel handle, may not be of the utmost criticality. However, if you are working on a large project with many complex surfaces, you can see how easy it is to make a mistake, so do keep that in mind. Having said all this, probably the best teacher for creating surfaces is practice. There are obviously many ways to create a surface, but some are going to work better given your specific needs, your particular project, etc. Let's bring up one more issue. So far, we've been creating surfaces first and then offsetting them after. How about if we offset the surface first and then trim it after? Let's try it out. I'm going to hide surface 8. And let's bring up surface 2. Now let's offset this large face first at half an inch. 
It is possible here that we'll get an error message. Let's choose to output as surfaces. Select the face to offset. Here's the preview of the offset. Let's click OK. Here's the warning message. Modeling failure. Vertex has no solutions. I've canceled out. To get around this problem, we can trim a bigger piece of this surface first. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me activate the offset tool again. Output is surfaces. Distance, let's change that to zero. Activate the select pointer and select this face. OK. Now let's right click and hide surface to visibility. Activate the trim tool next. For our cutting tool, we're going to use the XY plane. The segments to remove, this one, this one. Click OK. This should solve our problem. All right, let's undo. Basically, the most likely problem was created along these edges here. Let's redo and activate the offset tool again. Enter 0.5, output as a surface. We'll select the face. Here's our preview. Let's click OK. And now it looks fine. Now let's extrude this profile. Activate the extrude command. Extrude as surfaces. Select this profile. Let's take a right view. That's to make sure that the profile extends out far enough. We'll just take it out a bit more. And click OK. And let's activate the trim tool. Cutting tool. Segments to remove. OK. Let's right click and hide surface 16 now. While it may seem that we've created the surface last, in our browser we see that extrusion 16 was the last surface. It's actually surface 15 where we created the offset, and then afterward we use the trim tool to trim the surface. That's why this surface sits higher in the tree than surface 16. Let's hide 15. Scroll down a bit. Offset 7 and trim 3 are hidden. Now if I scroll back up, I also see offset 7 and trim 3. In order to bring this surface up, I need to right click on offset 7 and make it visible. However, I don't have this option with Trim 3. This might seem kind of confusing. Don't worry, you're going to get the hang of this pretty soon. So in summary, in this chapter we've used four different methods to create our handle surface. Each one gives us workable but different results. This concludes our tutorial about creating the offset surface for our funnel handle. In our next tutorial, we're going to conclude this exercise and complete the funnel handle surface.